Hi everyone, I want to show you a game from round two uh, from the Dortmund Chess Tournament and this game is between uh, Radislaw Wojtaszek with the white pieces and Wang Yu with the black pieces. Game started out uh, it's a Nimzo Indian Knight of Three variation, the old uh, uh, favorite of Kasparov's. Going all the way back to 1985 in the World Championship game uh, number 11. Uh, in this position, Kasparov played e3, c takes d4, e takes d4, h6 from Karpov, and we see these same uh, moves in plan today. And we can see there uh, the dynamic Kasparov took on the isolated pawn versus the uh, super solid Anatoly Karpov. And the game concluded from this um, rather um, quiet looking position as follows. Bishop g3, rook c8, bishop a2, bishop d6, d5, common theme with isolated pawns blowing up the center, knight d5, bishop takes d3, h takes d3, e takes, bishop takes, and of course here Karpov is, is pretty much equalized, but as always Kasparov finds ways to um, keep some type of pressure on the position. Rook C D one. Rook D seven from Karpov. And it's this constant pressure that Kasparov would always uh put on Karpov that eventually would cause Karpov to succumb to some type of tactical shot. And here um it's a famous one move blunder by Anatoly Karpov. Here he played the absolutely normal looking uh, rook c d8 and lost after queen takes d7 a bolt from out of the blue. Rook takes d7, rook e8, king h7, and bishop e4 check. And Karpov was forced to resign. Of course after g6 then just simply uh, rook takes d7. Back to our game. Um, e3 was played here and you see rook c1, uh, e3 uh, basically enter these moves are basically sometime interchangeable. So h6 was played here, bishop h4 maintaining tension, c takes d4, e takes d4, there's d5 from uh, Wang Yu rook c1 and bishop e7 and now here is where the game uh gets inter interesting to me um of course um black could have just played uh what i consider a normal looking move like knight c6 that's uh, bringing another piece into the game but here uh, Wang Yu plays bishop e7, uh, breaking the pin here. And at this point, uh, Wojtaszek plays c5, which is double-edged, of course. Now he takes space on the queen side and then uh, looks forward to um, utilizing this 3-2 uh, to two majority on the queen side with this advanced c5 pawn and the b2 and a2 pawns uh, together. So going forward, um, black has to be very mindful of that configuration and black must attack this uh, spearhead right away with b6 and that is what uh, Wang Yu does so he plays b6 and now here is the test of the idea uh, Wojtaszek plays b4 which is natural trying to maintain the spearhead a5 putting more pressure on the uh, pawn and now here uh, Wojtaszek plays knight a4 if he plays the natural 
uh, looking move to try to fortify the b4 pawn a3 then black would simply take here and then black can continue with a uh, move like knight c6 forcing the pawns even uh, forcing the pawn uh, to the b5 square the position becomes very uh, double-edged and now basically the whole game is going to rest on the strength of this uh, b5 pawn and that's where this knight is important on e4 to get rid of this defender here and then you just have this bishop uh, defending here so for example after d takes e4 knight e5 rook d8 and black has to just be vigilant and watch this complex but as long as his piece is over there he should be okay for instance bishop uh, c4 let's try f6 knight g6 and queen f7 and you can see some of the difficulties that can be faced uh, dealing with this early uh, pawn events uh, c5 it's not so easy to unravel uh, black is not losing but black must um, be very uh, vigilant uh, here and watch those pawns so instead of a3 um, Wojtyszek played knight a4 and this allowed um, Wang Yu just to take at a4 uh, take on b4 then knight takes b6 and rook takes a2 but white still has the spearhead at c5 which is what he wanted queen b3 attacking the rook rook goes back to a7 and now queen takes b4 knight e knight bd7 Knight takes d7, bishop takes d7, bishop d3, rook a4, queen d2, knight e4, bishops come off, knight takes d2, and now we're into the end game. And knight takes f3, g takes f3. And now notice that um, white's pawn structure is, is busted up for the most part. And black has a perfect pawn structure. But the killer is this C5 pawn. This is the most important um, item on the chessboard here. Besides the kings. And if uh, white uh, can successfully guard this pawn. And uh, protect it. Then uh, black is going to be in real big trouble here. However, I think. The black strategy is basically just to blockade this pawn and restrict restrict it while attacking the weaknesses that white has, specifically this d4 pawn. Let's see what happened. So king e2 was played. Now, notice also, I didn't mention this, that this pawn is, is on priest. So king e2, now I did is of course to bring the king up to e3. Now rook d4 is a critical uh, continuation. Rook takes d4 because of course you want to take that. And perhaps when you was worried about the continuation c6. When after bishop c, uh, c8. King e3, for instance. Rook b4. And let's say rook bd1. But in this position, I don't see how white can really um, 
make too much progress. This this isolated pawn seems like it seems weak uh, weak to me at this point. I'm not saying white is win. I'm not saying black is winning, but I think at this point, you know, just move the king over. I think at this point that black should be okay. And again, that's just a sample line. And then rook e7 attacking the pawn would be meant by that. And I, I think the game is equal. So rook d4 was definitely, um, rook takes d4 was definitely probably the, the correct move there. Because I can't see... You know, I'll have to listen to some analysis. You know, maybe somebody else looks at this game. Um, but I can't see, um, you know, maybe chess base later on or something like that. I can't see a refutation to um, rook takes d4. So, when you play bishop c6, just blockading. This allowed king e3, and then his idea was to play e5. However, at the e5, d takes e5. Now black kind of, you know, isolates his own pawn structure here. He gets active, but I don't know if he's being active in the right side of the board. Like he really needs to concentrate on the king on the queen side, but now he's on the king side. Because I don't think white cares about those pawns on the king side as much as um when um you know when you might think he does. Because he's more concerned about um pushing the C pawn and removing the blockade. And we can see that in the um the play that can, uh transpires. So at the rook b one D4 check, King D2. <clears throat> King F8. Now, again, he has to be very careful. Bishop takes F3, for example. Rook HC1. And let's say Rook takes H2, then C6. And then Black probably has to give up this uh give up the bishop at some point to stop this pawn this is possible rook takes f2 check just getting real greedy and the game uh gets real gets uh real unclear here say after d3 but I think that white uh, starts taking command this pawn is very powerful I just showed you that line just to give you an idea of you know what happens if black gets the wrong idea and starts trying to chop off all these weak pawns so what happened in the game was king d2 king f8 so when you saw that it was important to keep this blockade that's what he does but then rook b6 comes and again, in contrast, look where this rook is. Rook c8, rook hb1. Again, confirming what I said is Wojtaszek just abandons the, the pawns over there on the uh, king side. He understands that that's not the issue. That's not the most important issue. King e7, rook a1, rook c7, preventing rook a7 check. Rook a a6, and now it's hard for black because black's rook is cut off over here. So it's kind of like he's been duped into going after some weak pawns on the king side, but now his blockade is being challenged. So bishop takes f3, bishop b5, taking over the square in front of the pawn. Bishop g4, rook a8. Threatening checkmate right here. 
bishop c bishop c6 excuse me bishop c8 rook c6 king d8 a rook is removed king takes c7 rook a7 and king b8 and rook takes f7 and wang yu resigns so just like that um uh he loses the game and that's all because of this pass pawn right the defense around the pass pawn blockading it caused um wang yu to uh start misplace misplace his pieces um that rook maneuver where his rook wind up on h4 was definitely a mistake that combined it's basically he he had this plan he played um uh, e5 d d takes rook h4 rook b1 and then d4 cutting his he cut his own rook off this allowed white to infiltrate on the queen side and and basically why this rook was away it overwhelmed uh wang yu on the queen side so beautiful game nice strategic uh win uh by uh Wojtyszek.